This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Blender Blast episode, where I want to show you something really cool that you can do in Blender without boring you for a full 30 minutes. Now, in this tutorial, I want to show you how to create and work with emissive materials in Blender. Emissive materials are materials that emit light, they glow, they look really cool, and you can use them to light up your 3D objects and scenes in really interesting ways. First, I'll show you how to set up basic emissive materials and how to assign them to all or parts of your 3D models. Then we'll take it just a little step further and talk about how we can emit lights from textures. Now this is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are pretty comfortable with the very basics of Blender. If you're just getting started, I highly recommend go and check out my absolute beginner tutorial series for Blender. I'm going to drop you the link to that down in the video description, so be sure to check that out first before you come back here. But first off, I want to give a big shout out to Invato Elements for sponsoring this video and helping me pay the bills. Invato Elements is a massive online resource offering over 55 million digital assets to kickstart your next creative project. They've got everything from graphic and video templates for your favorite tools such as Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve and others, to stock footage, graphic elements, music tracks, sound effects, fonts, website templates and a ton more. They offer a really simple licensing model that gives you full commercial rights to any asset you download and this license remains valid even after your subscription has ended. You can sign up for a monthly or an annual subscription, both giving you unlimited downloads across all of the assets and I will drop you a special link down in the video description that will give you 50% off when you choose the annual plan. And if you're unsure, why not sign up for a free account? You get 12 free assets every month and you can upgrade your account at any time you want. But now I feel like I've waffled on forever, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I have a small scene set up here and to make it easy for you to follow along, you'll be able to download this exact Blender file from my website. So simply go to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you will be able to grab this file and follow along. Now in my scene, I have a simple light box set up and in the middle, I've got this really cool robot here and I do firmly believe in giving credit where credit is due. I did not build this robot model. Instead, I grabbed this off Blender Swap. It's called Robot XR, created by Ainuru Husen. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Amazing looking model, go grab that. I'll drop you the download link to that in the video description as well if you want to, but you can also just grab the Blender file from my website. I've compressed it so it's a bit smaller to download. So let's get started. Let's jump over into rendered view. And right now this is being rendered out by Eevee. And while you can make emissive textures work in Eevee, maybe I'll make a separate tutorial for that if you're interested. It's much easier in cycles. It works out of the box and it looks really good. So let's come into our render properties and change our render engine from Eevee over to cycles. I'll also make sure I have it GPU accelerated just so it renders a little bit faster. And that actually looks pretty cool. Now, right now, this is actually lit by a number of lights that I've set up around the light box. So let's come into the outliner, disable all of the lights. And this is what it kind of looks like without. You can already see there's an emissive material assigned to the face of the robot. So you can see this really nice blue glow. But let's create our own emissive material and assign it to the box itself. With the box itself selected, let's come into the material tab. Right now, this box has no material assigned. So let's press new to add a new material. I'm going to call this one light box. And by default, this is going to use the principled BSDF, which does support emission. Now there's a ton of different properties that you can tweak, but the one that you really want is this emission property right here, which is right now set to black. Let's simply click on that. And this is super simple. Well, let's just turn it bright white. And that turns our box into essentially a light box where every surface emits white light. And you can see that being reflected and lighting up that robot really nicely. Now let's be a little bit more selective about which parts of our outer box actually emit that light. So it looks a little bit more interesting. And you can use this for building sci-fi hallways or spaceships or all sorts of different cool things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my material tab. Let's go back to the top. Let's select the light box material and I'm going to temporarily just remove it from the cube. Let's add a new material. Let's call this one dark underscore metal. Let's come down a little bit. I'm going to make it just a little bit darker. I'm also going to make it metallic, bring up the specular and bring down the roughness. So it's going to be quite a reflective material. Let's make sure we come back to the top and let's add another material slot so that we can assign two materials to this box. Let's add another slot. 
Let's come to the selector and in here I'm now going to select my light box as the second material on this box. With the box selected, press tab to go into edit mode and I'm going to select the faces that I actually want to assign the light box material to. So I'm going to select the one at the top here and at the bottom here, I'm not sure you can see this, maybe I'll go into wireframe mode for just a second. I've got these little panels on the side, so I'm going to hold down shift and come to select these three flat panels on the bottom of this cube. Let's return back to the render view and with those faces selected, let's select the light box material and hit assign to assign that light box material to only those faces. Let's press tab to exit edit mode. And now this looks much more interesting, right? So now we have our light box set up and some really nice light panels that light up our robot. Now I'm finding this white light a little bit too weak. So let's come back to the materials properties with the light box material selected, come to the bottom and Hmm, the emission is already as bright as it can be. There's no strength parameter, so there's no way to make the emission brighter in here. Now you can modify this particular shader using the shader editor, which I've covered in a separate Blender tutorial, but we can actually change the shader altogether because a lot of these properties we're not really gonna use. We're really just using the emission out of this principle BSDF. So let's come to the top here on the surface option, which is right now set to be the principle BSDF. Let's pop this open. And in here, there's actually a shader specifically for emission. So let's select that. Most of the properties for the shader have gone. You still have the color, but now you also have a strength parameter. And if you now jack this up, now you can control the strength of this emissive light. So now you can make some really bright sci-fi hallways or, you know, light up your little killer robot. Finally, the last thing I want to show you is how to use textures to emit light. Right now, this looks interesting, but I'd love to have like a really big colored texture in the background here that shines some colored light onto the robot just to make this look a little bit more interesting. So let's create a new material for that. With the box still selected, let's come back up in the material properties. Let's add another material slot and let's create yet another material. And let's call this one glow underscore sunset. I know I want this to be an emissive shader as well. So I'm going to change the surface option from principle BSDF over to emission. Now on the color option, rather than just picking a simple boring solid color, let's click on the little circle to the right of that color property, which allows us to connect an input into what drives this color attribute. And that's going to bring up a whole bunch of different options that you can learn about and play with. Let's choose to add an image texture as the input. I mean, just make this a little bit bigger. That's going to give you a selector for either selecting an existing image texture in your project. I'm just going to hit open navigate to where you downloaded the tutorial files and in there you should find the linear dash retro dash gradient dash background JPEG image. Let's hit open image and we can't see anything because well we haven't assigned this particular material to any part of our cube just yet. So with the cube still selected again hit tab to go into edit mode and let's select this back panel here. So I'm going to select the faces at the back behind the robot. I'm going to select all of the ones all around. Let's select the glow sunset material in our materials tab and hit assign. And that is looking really cool. Now I have already set up the UVs of my cube to map properly to that texture. If you're finding that this texture sits completely weirdly on your model, what you need to do is come to the top of the 3D view to the solid line between the menu and the actual 3D view, right click on that, select to create a vertical split and let's split our viewport into two. On the right hand side, you can still see the rendered original view that we had. On the left hand side, you've now got a new 3D view, but let's change this over on the top left hand side here in this little drop down. Let's change this over from the 3D viewport to the UV editor. You should see your material selected there. If you can't, just make sure that in this drop down here in the middle, you've got your linear retro gradient background or whatever texture you've assigned selected in that. In the 3D view on the right hand side, let's select the faces that we have assigned to that texture. And on the left hand side, you can now see the UVs and you can actually select these ones. You can scale it down and you can see the texture change here and how that's being mapped. You can select individual vertices, grab them and move them around to realign how that texture sits assigned to that part of the cube. So this is really just the mapping of the 3D model to your 2D image, just in case you're not familiar with that. I've got a separate tutorial on how to do texture mapping and UV editing anyway. Again, I'm going to drop you the link to that down in the video description in case you're not familiar with how that works. Let's right click on this panel border, select to join the areas, drag left, click, and just kill that off. Let's hit tab to exit edit mode. And now this looks pretty cool. You can now keep tweaking your materials. Maybe I'll bring the strength of the side lights down just a little bit. Let's reselect the glow sunset. And maybe I wanna pump the strength of that up just a little bit more as well, just to give it a little bit more intensity from the glow behind. Maybe what I'll also do is I'll select the two 
target sensors on the killer robot. Let's add another material. Let's call this sensor underscore target. Change this again over to an emissive material. Let's just make this deadly red and let's pump up the strength on that. Make sure it's assigned to the other target sensor as well. And that looks pretty cool. Our entire scene is now just lit by emissive textures. And if you now render this out, we have our killer robot lit really nicely by nothing but emissive textures. And that is all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more. All and any useful links you will find in the video description and please leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.